Hi, my name is Grace and I live in a container house. This is my full-time living house and I've been living in it for eight months now. When I started my construction process, I decided to repurpose the containers. Instead of buying new containers, I repurposed these used containers. My container house is made out of two 20 feet containers with a total livable space of 192 square feet. I have stacked my containers. I have tried to maximize my container spaces as much as possible. So my container doors have been opened to create more space. My house is not 100% done. It's work in progress, but it's livable. So let me show you my container home. When you enter, you first enter into the living room. The living room has taken two thirds of the lower container. The kitchen has taken one third. Then to connect the lower container to the top container, I created an extension and it's in that extension that I have placed my staircase. I chose to do a big kitchen because in all the houses I've lived in, we've always had very tiny kitchens. All the landlords tend to squeeze kitchens and that is what I missed. So I decided to do, I kept on telling myself, if I do a, if I do a house, I will do a big kitchen. And for the size of house, I believe my kitchen is quite big. The top container has the bedroom space, bathroom, and toilet. When you get to the top container, you first get into a common space that would have been a laundry, but is currently more or less like more storage space. Then you walk into the bathroom. I have combined the toilet and bathroom in one space. Since I don't have the luxury of so much space to separate them into two rooms, so they're all fitted in one space. that separates the bedroom from the toilet and bathroom this gives a bit of privacy to the bed area since I don't have a door to separate my bed space from the bathroom the only place I am able to fit a door is right at the beginning of the container to separate the bedroom and the staircase so that makes the bedroom and suit. But to give the bed space a bit of privacy from the bathroom, I have separated the two rooms with a wardrobe. a private balcony that is only accessible from the bedroom my balcony measures 16 feet by 5 feet that is big enough to allow me host if I wanted to host it allows me to host guests at the balcony I also have a private barbecue area so that means I can barbecue from my bedroom So one thing about my bedroom or my bathroom is that you get to see the staircase from the bathroom. I have an access here. This is a window that was initially here when this container was an office. So since we, have, we had to convert it into a house or I had to convert it into a house, I decided to maintain this feature. So I get to see my staircase from my bathroom. 
I'm definitely saving the last, the best for last. My most favorite part of this house is the staircase. One, because I get to see it from my bathroom. Two, is because a lot of effort went into making this staircase. Uh, I would say 90% of it was a DIY project. Of course, with the help of others, but yeah, this was my best part yet. My best part of this house. Uh, another feature about this, uh, this staircase is that it gets to take advantage of the natural lighting. I had translucent mabati or translucent roofing so that during the day I can have enough lighting coming through the staircase. And also at night, I get, it gets to reflect to the rest of the room. I get to see the staircase from my bedroom. Because of that reflection of light, it, it is well lit at night. I don't need to, to turn this on, but still, even if I do, uh, there is enough light here. I have three cats and I can say they also love this part of the house. Normally during the day, you'd, you'd see them bask here, uh, trying, to in, trying to enjoy the sunlight or the sun heat. Did the sunlight really know the sun heat uh, they're always somewhere around the staircase of course they would try to be in the living room sometimes but most of the time they're here so what I got to DIY in this house is the staircase and uh, this bit this bit this was a DIY. It was initially done by a carpenter, but I didn't like how it was coming along. So before he could finish, I asked him to stop. And uh, yes, I decided to do it myself. It has taken the longest to do it, but I'm glad it turned out the way it did. I can say it turned out better than what the carpenter would have done. Maybe. I don't know. Then the staircase. For this staircase, it has a story. Mm, the wood that was used for this staircase was uh, imported wood meaning this is part of the wood that comes with pallets and so I just happened to bump into one of them and the supplier happened to, to be restocking it even after he runs out of, of stock and so you don't get to Buy them when you need them sometimes you only get them when it's in stock so for that reason i usually go to him and buy whenever i think i have a project that would require them and a bit of it was joined they're not the actual width we had to create the width sand it down uh vanish it then place it it has been here for a while and it has it, it looks like soft wood, but funny enough, it it has survived. So yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Don't I don't know as much as I thought I did on wood. Oh, before I forget, so there's this guy in Umoja who has a shop, an art shop. He has paint works from different artists, and he displays them and sells them, and of course gives a, a, a portion of whatever he gets to the artists so he has a variety of paint work i want to believe he has featured a number of artists you can tell there are different artists by the brush strokes and um, you have realistic paint works you have abstract paint works uh yeah so you can you can you can tell it's a mixture of so many people's hands and people's signatures and people's art he this stood out for me because i felt i needed a bit of color in this space because you only have orange and brown and white so i thought what if we could have some color then one interesting bit about this piece is that this is the container it's not a full container but it's part of a container and so the only way we could mount this was if we had maybe 
had a string then have it hung from 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 the roof or maybe we drill it directly to the wall but i thought this is metal what if we could use magnets and so we have magnet pieces at strategic points both at the top and at the bottom yeah, and at the bottom so all I have to do I don't need to use glue I don't need to use, to use any strings I don't need to use uh, any other thing apart from magnets so it's just magnets and I'm done I've started sharing the advantages of living in a container house <laughs> so yes uh, this was just a quick tour of the house. Of course, there's so much I'll need to show you about the house from the materials where I got some of the materials from. If my choice of material was 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 good, or if I regret my choice of materials, there's so much, so much that needs to be shared about this house. But before you go, this channel is meant for tiny house enthusiasts. I am currently looking for people who are living in container housing or alternative buildings uh, apart from brick and mortar so that we can share our ideas, we can share our works for people who are also considering this but they fear that maybe there's not enough information or maybe they'll be the only ones who are doing this or they do not just have the right information of how to go about uh, alternative building methods or so to speak so yes like share subscribe help me share this video so that you can reach more people who are interested in container houses or alternative building methods uh, let's build a community until next time bye